So there is a pretty good Vim tutorial that all of you have on your computer, but hardly any of you know about. So let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the first thing you're going to need is to actually have Vim installed. If you don't have that, I'm really not sure why you're watching a Vim tutorial, but... So if you're on Arch and you don't have Vim installed, then you can go sudo pacman s and download Vim, or you can download NeoVim. <clears throat> you can use apt-get on Ubuntu and Debian systems to get it like that if you don't have it installed. I think they probably come with it pre-installed, but if they don't, then you can do it like that. And if you're on Windows, I know that Git Bash comes with Vim by default, but there's probably some way to get it working with PowerShell or Command Prompt. It might actually come by default with those. I actually have no idea. Maybe Vi or something does? Maybe. I don't know. I don't use Windows. So what we're going to run is Vim Tutor. So what this will do, if I can spell it, it brings up pretty much a massive text file which will take you through all of the basics of Vim. So I'm not going to go through all of this with you guys because there is a lot in here, but I guess we can go over the first couple of lessons. That might be a fairly good idea and then I'll leave it to you guys to go over the rest of it. So it starts off with telling you how to move around, so H, J, K, and L, which is fairly simple if you know about Vim. But this, this tutorial itself, it's more of a practical tutorial, that's why it's a text file. So instead of just telling you, oh, this is how you do something, you're expected to go and actually try it for yourself, so you can actually learn it. And rather than just memorizing what the key commands are, actually understanding what they do, so you know how to actually use them practically. So if we go down a bit, it'll tell us how to exit Vim. Since you're pretty early on, you could probably do this now, but it might be better if you just open up another instance of Vim. So we can do this, and if we do the command that says here, which is colon Q exclamation mark, that will quit without saving. And we come further down and we go for deletions in here. So you can also delete with the backspace key, but I think this is using Vi, and Vi doesn't support that, or there's some other reason why it doesn't support backspace. But if you were in insert mode, you could do that. So if we just follow along with what it says, so we can delete these values in here by just pressing X, and you get the point there. So if we come a bit further down, then we have insert mode, which is basically just... So by default, when you're in Vim, you're in normal mode, which is the mode where you can put in commands. But to actually insert text, you have to be in insert mode. So it will expect you in here to actually fix up what this text is. So I guess we can do some of that. So some text is missing, if I can spell from this. Anyway, you get the point, I'm not gonna go through all of it. Then we have appending here, so you can jump to the end of the line with a capital A key, which will also chuck you into insert mode. And then you've got the second mysterious way to quit out of Vim, which is colon WQ, which is colon, which is the command key, write and quit. It's fairly simple once you wrap your head around what that actually means. So Q means quit, W means write. It's not actually that difficult to leave Vim. It's it's kind of just a meme. So it will show you how to actually save a file in here. Then we have the summary for the lesson. So it will go over everything that you would have learned in that lesson. So I think there's another six more lessons and they get more and more complex as they go on. So if we skip ahead, there's a bit on text substitution. Yeah, here we go. So if you come down to lesson four, there's a bit in here about how to actually do text substitution. I don't tend to use this often just because it's a fairly hefty command to write out. And then what is, ah, right, lesson five is all about doing external stuff. So running external commands, piping external commands back into Vim. If you want to say ls the current directory and then put all of that, those results into Vim, then you can do that without having to leave Vim and actually pipe that into a new file. You can just do that directly within Vim. And finally in lesson five, they also go over visual mode. So I'm pretty much just skipping over stuff in here because I don't really want to make this into a full Vim tutorial. What I wanted to, what I really want to do with this video is just show you guys the, some of the stuff that you can learn with Vim Tutor if you come check it out yourself. Obviously there are other ways you can go about learning Vim, like there are really good videos online and there's really good information on the Vim Wiki. The Vim Wiki in some places is a bit hefty to read, but I think there's some good information you can get from that. The only thing really that Vim Tutor doesn't go over is how to do macros and also how to do Vim scripting, but 
Vim scripting can be learned from the like Vim help screen. So if we go colon help, then in here, this will go over Vim scripting or Luke Smith has also got a fairly good video on how to actually do Vim scripting. Plus there's tons and tons of other videos out there. So I don't think you would have learned a ton from this video itself, but I think if you go and check out Vim Tutor, if you want to learn Vim, then you might actually get something really useful out of the program rather than just trying to like hobble around in it, not really knowing what to do and trying to use it like other text editors because Vim, it's really not like other text editors. You even just like some of the basic stuff like normal mode and insert mode, but also text objects and things like that. With your typical things like Atom and VS Code and things like that, you're typically just working on more a more like a standard text editor. Going into Vim, you'll probably hate it initially, but after you've given it a shot, you'll really want to be using Vim for everything else. Basically, once you get used to Vim, you want to turn everything else into Vim. So probably the last important thing in Vim Tutor, we've skipped ahead again because I don't really feel like going over all of it, is it shows you how, ooh, what? I mean, start mode, I guess. It shows you how to use the help menu and then also how to set up a Vim RC. So your Vim RC is where you're going to be doing all of your Vim commands and your Vim scripting and things like that. So if we bring up my Vim RC, which I'm probably going to go over in a separate video just so I can talk about everything that I've done in here. A lot of the stuff I pinched from other people because I thought it was pretty cool. But uh, let's see if we edit anyway, it doesn't matter. So in your Vim RC, this is where you do your plugins and stuff. I don't know about doing plugins for regular Vim. This is set up for NeoVim. And there's a couple other things like Powerline and you can set all of the different settings of Vim. And then if we come down a bit more, we've got basically all of my Vim macros and all my, my Vim script hotkeys pretty much. So there's a lot of commands in Vim that are a bit hefty to write. So you might as well just bind them to a key if you're gonna be using them even like semi-frequently. So I don't know what you would have gotten out of this video really. It's more of a tutorial about a tutorial. So I don't know how useful it would be, but I will leave some videos in the description below about some actual like proper Vim tutorials if you don't want to use Vim Tutor. But I do think Vim Tutor is a really useful tool that hardly anyone knows about, but pretty much everyone has on their system because if you're using Linux, you probably have Vim installed. If you don't have Vim installed, you probably have Vi installed. And I believe it also comes with Vi. So regardless, you're gonna have this installed. And if you wanna be actually learning Vim, you don't have to go and find a video on it. You can just read through this. You don't even need an internet connection. You can just go and open up this program, learn Vim and get started with it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you want to see next time. Or if, I don't know, maybe you want to see me do a Vim video or something. Maybe I might do that. I don't know. I don't think I know enough about it to do a proper tutorial though. So apart from that, if you want to see more from my channel, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon below and maybe you'll see updates, but we can't trust YouTube to do that. So go follow my Twitter account and my Mastodon where I post video updates and random other stuff. Mainly just video updates, but occasionally I'll put some other dev stuff up there, but we'll see what happens. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out. <laughs>